So. We're not going to a different school. Did you just say we're going to a different school? Not if we're li listen. This house is just we're just looking. And if this had to be the house, like we would not go to. They would not go to a different school. How do we do that? If they can't stay at their school. Then this isn't an option at all. That's what I was. That was my point. No, look, she just about they're about to. Have that was my point. Total meltdown. Don't freak out my kids anymore. I don't know. I'm going to say it again. We're not going to a different school. Besides, mom won't let us buy a house. So why are we looking? Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's July 3rd, 2024, and I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. We all know that Cody Brown and his wife, Robin Brown, are currently living in Flagstaff, Arizona, and their life as the king and queen bee of polygamy is officially over, and they're becoming exposed by family members and by the kids that were underneath their control for years sort of dissecting and putting out details about what they experienced for the years that the show Sister Wives has been on the air. And for a long time, Cody Brown was able to control the wives of his family with a the psychological hold of them believing that he was a god and that by following him, they could become goddesses in heaven and that he spoke for God, he was the priesthood of their family, and that because everything centered around him, they existed to please Cody and to never, ever question him. For a while, the system worked, and Cody was able to put out shows where it looked like the women got along, they said all the right things, even though they weren't always the right things to say, and you could tell they weren't always feeling what was being said. You could tell there was a lot of covering for Cody or trying to dance around topics. And as the years wore on, it was harder and harder for them to cover for him. It was harder for them to lie to themselves. It was harder for them to live underneath the stress of that environment, the unhappiness that they were experiencing, and just the whole inequity of everything. And as people grow out of cults or they start to wake up from the cult mentality, a lot of times what happens is you enter into a space where you become the wicked one. You, if you start questioning the cult, everything is turned on you and you are the one to be blamed. It's your fault because you weren't obedient enough, you weren't loyal enough, you weren't doing this enough. This unwillingness for some of the family to accept other members of the family or to communicate with other members of the family or to make amends with other members of the family. I have somebody in my life who is fundamentally loyal to me, who sees me as the head of the family. I'm saying to you that you and I get that if you're loyal to me. She hasn't been mistreated. There is no victim here. She's lost her faith, her religion, her direction, and now she is wanting out of this marriage. She's, she's proving that she's in the independent woman now by telling me how the best way to pack this is. It bothered me to the core. You questioning things is satanic. You questioning things is demonic. You not following the leadership is against the faith, against the code, against the rules. For years, Cody has been trying to keep several of the women under his control by basically degrading them and making them feel like they were the problem. He had a lot of trouble controlling Christine. And so I think for a lot of a long time, Cody was basically just beating down her self-esteem to make her feel like she wasn't pretty enough, wasn't good enough because he needed to value himself greater. So he was devaluing her so that he could put himself above her. It was okay if she moved my stuff out. She just did it. She didn't ask me if it was okay if she moved to Utah and took truly she just told me she was gonna do it. I don't have time to play like she has time to play. I got a lot of work to do and a lot of responsibilities. I don't get this. Don't show up here and stuff like that. It's like, what are, what are you doing all day? It's certainly not cooking and cleaning because then, listen, there's nothing to say here. I, I, I know that I can't talk Christine to my kids. I don't wanna talk her at all. Even though that's my natural, my natural urge is to do that. I have to control that because that's not fair. Same thing with Janelle, same thing with Mary. With Mary, he made everyone believe that she was evil and that she was the bad one and that she was the one that was causing all of the problems in the family, even though at the core, 
the root of all the problems in the family starts and ends with Cody. Or Phil, when Cody sits there saying, oh, I'm so in love with all of my wives and I'm also in love with Robin. It's like, okay, so were you lying then or are you lying now? Because in the past couple of years, like he's basically come out and said he never loved Christine. He's told me he was trying to affirm that he loved me and he was trying to do his duty. He met his match when he met his wife, who's now his legal wife, Robin. Robin was 10 years younger than him and she was divorced with three kids. She was tall and thin and he decided that she was the and she was like the epitome of everything that he had wanted in life. He called her his trophy wife, he called her his supermodel. And you may have thought you were a success yourself at the time. Oh, I, I thought I was a total success. I have a diesel jeans model coming into my family in uh, 2010. And I thought that was the biggest validation. She had other people in our church interested in her. She could have, she had propos or offers from other people to marry her. And she absolutely believed in plural marriage and she absolutely believed in me. And now that no one will lie for Cody, and the mask has been exposed and the cult of Cody Brown is d disintegrating, you're gonna start to see the resistance to this disintegration is going to come from Cody, Robin, and the kids. And rather than attacking Cody or looking at Cody as the problem, they're gonna view the opposition as a spiritual attack or an attack against their God, attack against their faith, and it's going to be proof to them that what they're doing is justified and what is happening out there is not justified. And this is a us versus them mentality that is inbred into all cults. I've never seen a cult that doesn't have this mentality where it makes people inside the group feel like they're special, like they know something that others don't, like they are chosen over everyone else. And this is something that is in, that's bred into them in the AUB. They are the chosen ones that are preparing for God to return. They are the 144,000 or whatever it is in their, in their Bible that they use as their number. And they are select. They at church at the AUB are told they're on a mission. They've been picked, they've been handpicked by God to do this. So they believe that they're better than everyone out here. They believe that their purpose is greater than ours. That mentality makes them feel like justified in what they believe. It makes them feel better than everyone out there. It also makes them susceptible to accept accepting the bad things that happen on the inside because why would they wanna go out there if they're the bad people out there? Everyone in here is good. And if I leave here, then I'm leaving good. I'm leaving the righteous. I'm leaving the chosen. I've been, and I'm not, I'm tired of being punished and blamed and people thinking I'm a bad person because I just, I'm communicating. I'm tired of feeling bad that I have a good relationship with Cody when other people don't. That's on them. They need to figure that out. She was the one that made choices. Janelle's the one that made choices. They handed him to me and said, We're, we don't want to spend time with him, basically. He's had wives reject him affection-wise because they are uncomfortable or they don't like I was pushing for the video chat for the sake of the kids. When I was getting all this pushback, I just finally went, why am I trying here? And I was like, fine, I'm out. You know, this is an effort in futility. My kids and I think it's heartbreaking and stupid because we don't understand. And here it is, just another reaffirmation that we're the outsiders and we're on the other side. We're not. We refuse to be. We don't know what else to do. On top of that, it tells them to stuff down their emotions, not ask questions and obey and just do what they're told. Girls are taught to keep sweet and not make a wave. Cody is, Cody and Robin are grooming their two oldest daughters to be obedient, submissive wives. He is breeding them, indoctrinating them to accept a submissive role in their relationship and accept that their job is not to be a leader, is not to have equal footing and is to obey their husbands. He's accepting, he's indoctrinating the women to believe that feminism is evil, that women's rights are an atrocity and that it is abhorrent for a woman to hold a position of power in the same place as a man. 
you always not you representing always, no, very well for you me. Put Stop this back, representing you for put me. it well then you call them, Cody. Because you always oh, put it back on me. I that phone goes you, both ways. You and put I've it been back available on to me. talk. You know, it still surprises me that Cody feels like it's my responsibility to facilitate this relationship between he and my children. I, I am was not, only asking everybody I, to obey the rules of our home. You have cheated me out of my contact with my family. And there's no longer this need to separate for fear of the disease. We can't get together until we sort this all out. Now that's their new drum. It's the new excuse to keep everybody apart. This. Yeah. He's getting angrier and angrier, and he's getting sharper and sharper and more black and white with me about these kids need to respect me. Oh, really? Choose him, choose my children. I don't know who says that. Now he acts like, now he's flipped it and said it's it's all my fault. I don't recognize this man. They're talking points that come directly from the AUB, and these are feelings that Cody has expressed and Cody will say, but probably not always on the show, although we've seen a little bit of it saying that he wants people to conform to patriarchy. So now that everyone is getting attacked, Cody's being exposed and it's viewed as an attack, right? But really what's happening is the truth is coming out. The lies, they're not lying for him anymore. They're not covering him in his cloak of charity. The cloak of charity that Cody talks about actually wasn't developed by him. It wasn't anything that he came up with himself. The cloak of charity is something that Rulin Allred actually spoke about in the AUB when he spoke about how you don't come with grievances of other people, that you're supposed to cover one another in charity, you're supposed to cover everyone in, in kindness and never to assume the worst in people and to just always be kind and protecting their honor. Like, don't have, if you have a complaint about someone, don't say it, give them the benefit of the doubt. If someone's doing something wrong to you, don't address it, don't tell other people, because you need to protect their honor, you need to protect their their good name. There are sermons of Rulin Allred actually talking about this because people once complained to him about brethren in his church misappropriating tithing money and living off of the tithing money luxuriously while church members struggled to feed their families, or money laundering, or abuse in the church. Abuse in the church is a huge problem. In fact, back in s September of 2023, they had a huge meeting in the AUB, the Brethren, about men beating their women. With domestic violence is such a huge problem in the Browns church that they were talking about how domestic violence was such a big issue that this is not how you're supposed to treat your women. It's not how you're supposed to treat your children. However, they also told the women that even if they're faced with domestic violence and they want a way out of their relationship and they want to release from their marriages, the brethren basically said, we're not going to release you. So no. You're acting like you're not even culpable in this situation. Culpable? For what? What? Okay. That's a blatant hey, lie. Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay, just, just give it a Sorry, second. I'm mad as hell because you know what? Everybody put the on me. Okay. Oh, man. I, I cannot believe that I have done all this to save you, to save truly, to save my children. I did not know. I did not know that it wouldn't harm them. So when Cody and Robin were acting like it was an appalling thing for Christine and Janelle and all of them to just leave without getting a release, it's because the church says that they're not gonna be allowed a release. They claim on the show that they can just go to the church and request a release. But in September of 2023, the brethren were saying they're they're not inclined to give releases for women and men because too many people are giving up on their marriages and marriages are breaking down all around them. You never tried to have really good relationship with these other people. And that's the reason I'm pissed off because I've sat here with it just like Christine, try and do this. You wanted to re renegotiate a relationship with me, but you wouldn't even have a decent one with them. Oh, he's about the kids. That was the easy part. Man, just the knife in the kidneys over all these years. And the sacrifices that I made to love you. Wasted. And frankly, a lot of this is in response, I think, to what's publicly happening with the, the Browns. And it's allowing other women in this culture to say, like, I don't have to do this anymore. Christine leaving was a huge wake up call to other women in this cult, seeing that you don't have to, like, accept abuse in your relationships. None of the women have claimed abuse because none of the women understand likely that they're being abused. So Cody has to keep control of somebody and he's gonna start controlling Robin and he's gonna control the kids. Now I understand that everyone hates Robin and they think that she is a evil vindictive woman. And I don't disagree that she is a huge problem, 
but I know the cult well enough to know that she doesn't have the control that people think she does. She doesn't have the say that people think she has. She can't do what people think she does. Yes, she can use her position as the head wife to hurt other people, but when it comes down to the final say in the family, she doesn't have it. I had one of the kids actually call me and like asking me, and I went, this is not me. I didn't make up these rules. And I very specifically pointed out that their dad, Cody, is not somebody to be run by one of his wives. I did not want them separating me and her from each other. So where I go, she's going to go. This idea that the boys are blaming me for stuff. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking that they would, he would work something out with the boys. And Cody can do whatever he wants to her and she has to be okay with it. So I've been noticing a pattern of behavior on the Pinterest boards of some of the girls that are under Cody's control still. One is a pattern of Aurora and Brianna becoming submissive wives, but I also noticed that recently Aurora has been posting about spiritual attacks. Aurora posted this on her Pinterest. It's not a coincidence that when you start getting closer to God, and his promises you are get you get attacked more than ever when the devil sees how close you're getting to the blessings god has for you he starts sending spiritual attacks and demons to operate through people around you to trigger you make you get out of your character remain alert realize it's a test and don't fall in the trap the us versus them mentality she's closer to god everyone that's criticizing the family is demonic and satanic and they're doing everything to get closer to god but everything but else on the outside that has an opinion that isn't like theirs is it's a demonic attack. It's a very destructive belief system because it makes them like incapable of taking criticism or even receiving feedback because they view that as justification that they're doing the righteous things for God. When you start talking about people expressing opinions to you that are outside of if they're if they're critical of what's happening in your house if they're critical of the choices that you're making if they're critical of your parents if they're critical of whatever and you're viewing that as justification that you're doing what's right it flips your ability to critically think because it's telling you that the red flags that you should be seeing are not red flags they're actually they're like the goalpost telling you that you're running towards the goalpost you're going to get a touchdown you're on the right track it skews your perceptions. And so in theory, if you wouldn't take this so literally, if the church that they grew up in didn't take this so literally, it wouldn't be a big deal. But it's evident that for Cody, if you don't obey him, he views that as like a carnal sin and you're not justified to be in his life. You, know, you keep you acting like this is my the... fault rules you did not and give you us any rules. Them. listen i'm tired so of being gaslit by you you are gaslighting me you have cheated me out of my contact with my family call me all kinds of names what that you're lazy about the rules that you won't accept and what they're not telling you on the show is that it's not just that he's rejecting his kids he's shunning them for accepting worldly ways of living that he doesn't abide by. They're doing things that he would never approve of. Even though he said at one point he wanted to give them free choice, the free choice was only allowed as long as he said it was okay. Like say you're Aurora and you have a sibling that's worried about you. Say you have a cousin that's worried about you. Say you're someone from Aurora's extended family in Montana that just wants to see her. They're, they're concerned about her well-being. They're concerned how isolated she is. They're concerned about her safety, whether or not she's okay in the same house with Cody Brown. And that concern would not be met under this theology as concern. It would be considered an attack because in order to follow Cody, you have to believe everything that Cody says is right. You can't listen to any feedback that's negative because what happens when you don't follow Cody is what happens to the other people in the family. If you want to have your life the way it is, if you want to have your nice house, if you want to have your nice things, if you want to have a nice car, if you want to have a nice place to live, you have to follow his rules. If not, go on your own. And then he'll be, you'll be the brunt of it. You'll get the brunt of it from him and you'll be humiliated by him. I see how they're doing this. Like, even though this is a benign post for a lot of you, I see how Cody and Robin are framing this in their house. 
The feedback you're seeing about us online is a spiritual attack. This tells us what we're doing is right, y'all. What we're doing is good. What they're doing is wrong. It's creating a division of we're better, they're wicked. It's not just the family members that are wicked, but it's us in the real world out here that are like, that are criticizing them. We're also demons because we're attacking their faith. There's a lot of posts on Aurora's Pinterest about not having a loved one, not being in a relationship, feeling alone and feeling like she wants to be with someone, but she hasn't found them yet. It's a lot of pressure, I'm sure, because she's at an age now. She's 22 and she should be married by now in this cult. I know that McKelty and Tony keep saying that their parents don't believe in it and that Cody and Robin don't even read the Book of Mormon and whatever. I don't believe it. Cody was on a podcast in November with two ex-Mormons. And even though he had skepticism and was presented with evidence about the, the, the prophet Joseph Smith that started the cult and the his un, underage brides and some of the abusive tactics he took to take children, he refused to acknowledge that it happened. He didn't want to go there. He'd said he didn't want to throw out everything that he had lived his life for, even though there were parts of it that he didn't agree with because he wasn't willing to let go of that belief system. He wasn't willing to let go of the Book of Mormon. He wasn't willing to let go of the belief. So he might not go to church, but he's unwilling to let go of that faith. Maybe he doesn't follow it the way that he once did, but I think that Tony's position of, oh, they're not even following it anymore, I don't agree with. I think they're not following it the way they once did, but Co Cody still is indoctrinated and believes a lot of what he believes. And he surrounds himself with other men that are in this cult, that are outside of the cult, that are fundamentalists like him. The majority of his friends are other fundamentalists. He's not living in the real world with, with other people that aren't fundamentalists. I still believe that they believe. I just don't think they believe the same way as they used to. I don't know if that makes sense. But they're not they're not showing anything in what Aurora and Brianna post to indicate that they're letting go of these feelings and these belief systems. And it's a very stark difference to the way they're raising Brianna and Aurora to the other girls in the family. Aurora, like think of the other girls in the family. They all, some of them have gotten married very young. Maddie and Mad Maddie and McKelty weren't even 20 years old when they were married. I think maybe maybe 20. Um, Gwendolyn was 21 and Isabel's not married yet. Aspen got married a little bit later. The only, the oldest girl, Aspen, doesn't have any kids. And Leon got married later, no children. Maddie has three kids. McKelty has three kids. Gwendolyn doesn't have any kids yet, obviously. But the, these girls are living relatively independent lives. Like Aspen has a career. Leon has a career. Maddie has a career. McKelty has a career. Gwendolyn is studying like, Ochem and she wants to be like a psychiatrist. Savannah wants to be a psychiatrist. Isabel's in college. They're not on this path of being submissive. And in fact, Christine's daughters, I would be, I would say it's safe to say at least the younger set are, are liberal. They are like fully embracing the liberal dogma. They're not conservatives anymore. They're not the fundamentalists anymore. But he still wants the women in his life to be fundamentalists. So he's grooming Aurora and Brianna to be that way. And it's sad. But all of this to say is that they are telling their kids that this is an attack. It's a spiritual attack. And it's just proof that what they're doing is right, which is scary because it means that they're telling Aurora, Brianna, and Saul and Ari that it's okay to d watch daddy be verbally abusive. It's okay that daddy is a raging maniac. It's okay that he screams and he yells and he breaks things and I have no doubt that there's huge fights that happen in that house. And Robin is saying it's okay because he's our God and I'm a submissive wife. So that's what I have for today. What are your thoughts? Is it a spiritual attack or is it abuse? Tell me in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and click on the bell so you never miss a video. Bye guys.